Welcome, welcome, welcome. Santa has not arrived yet, so we're going to get the last video of the series of six all finished tonight. So we can all get tucked in our beds and wait for Santa Claus to show up. Well, it's been a long day for me. And um, anybody who's watching these videos all in a row, yeah, it's it's a lot. So this is video six of six. And what you're watching is a gallery reading that was done in the middle of December. I and other people went and attended this gallery reading that was done by Suzanne Northrup, who is a old school um, cold reading medium who's been around for a long, long time, decades, done probably tens of thousands of readings over her lifetime. And Cheryl Murphy, who is a newcomer she is somebody who's associated with Thomas John. She's apparently been trained by him, though he didn't teach her to hot read. She cold reads. And you can learn more about this um, by watching the, the playlists of either of these people, Suzanne Northrup or Cheryl Murphy. There's also articles that will be linked in the description of these videos about them for Skeptical Inquirer I've written. And um, you're on the sixth video. So you can watch these in any order you want, but the first video has the most content about how this happened, how what's going on with the readings and so on. It's a sixth video now, so I'm a little tired. Um, and I know that we're in store for a wild ride. This is Suzanne, who is going to read multiple women at the same time. And their readings are going to get all gobbled together. Now, we saw her do this earlier in video four. I have never really noticed her do this before. I don't know it's a thing for her, but it, I, I don't know why she's doing it unless she wants to hide her mistakes by making apply to other women who are there or if she wants to give people the feeling that lots of people are getting readings. So everybody should be here. So everybody getting readings. Let's have lots of people in. You get a reading and you get a reading and you get a reading. I don't know, but it is odd. So um, I know when we watched this back in the middle of December, whenever the readings were actually happening, we were, there were ser several of us watching this going, what the heck just happened? And that's how it felt. It, what the heck just happened? <laughs> um, so I would suggest um, getting a pencil, pen, or typing, or and get a nice fresh uh, piece of paper. I'm, I'm going to be doing my best to keep up to try to understand what's going on, all right? So um, buckle up, buttercup. This should be interesting. Let's, let's get started. Roll it, roll it back over to you. Yeah, so, right, Bowling for Dollars. <laughs> dollars. I had one time that it was somebody was, they were part of the team of Bowling for Dollars. Okay, <laughs> it was really funny. All right, uh, so now I'm in my box program here. So there's a few people that I have in my box programs together um, that I'm going to sort of like go for. Um, and so I, I want to say I'm with, with Sharon. I want to say I'm with Sharon, Alicia, and Linda, but I'm not sure if there's another one that I'm going to add with it. But but there's 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 actually two men here, um, and one of them must be a brother or a husband or a peer level person, and he's standing between the both of you. So I'm not sure who he's with. So I don't know if that's with you, Sharon, or with you, uh, Alicia, or Linda. But he's definitely on one of your sides, and he's of a peer level. So he's either got to be a brother, brother-in-law, or boyfriend, male husband. And I don't care if we've gotten rid of them. Um, but I know him with one I, of you guys. I have a brother. Uh, who am I with now? Linda. Linda. Got it. Okay. And he's crossed, right? Yes. Okay. And so um, you, you, you brought me up, and I don't see the other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Ellie. I got to see the other two people. They're coming now. Okay. <laughs> you you can't take the other people away because you you take the dead people with them. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to sort of see them all together. All right. Very, very good here. Ah, 
Perfect. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I, I, I'm just going to dust because I'm hearing double sounds here. So I'm not sure if I got a combo with you guys. Okay. So your brother, he's been passed away, right? For a while, Linda? No, he no. passed in March. Oh, so he's really soon. Yes. And who's the female that he left here? Would you be the female or would be somebody else female connected to him that crossed? Um, who crossed? No, who, who's here? That was connected uh, my to sister. Him? She's also on the call. Got it. Okay. So it's his wife. No, his sister. We're his all siblings. Sister. Oh, you're all siblings. Okay. Got it. Okay. And she's on the, where the hell is yep. she? <laughs> Lori. She's on Lori. Got it. I was going to say, because I saw a lawyer earlier, I wanted to make sure. Now, there's one other quick thing here. There's a George somewhere connected to you guys. That would be my grandfather or uncle. Okay. And are they connected to your mom's side by the chance? Yes. Got it. So they're coming through with your brother. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I, I, I don't know if we can find Lori in the tab somewhere, but <laughs> she's floating around. <laughs> I knew there was another person. There she is. You're so good, Ellie. Um, the, I, I knew there was another person. I wasn't sure. That's what happens when you get separated. Okay. So, um, so real quick here, your brother is, first of all, he's, he's, he's kind of an interesting dude. So let me ask you this. He wasn't the, was he like the only male sibling or? Yes. Yes. So he said he's the one and only, so he's not being too boisterous. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and he's also very funny because I not only was the one and only, but I was the one and only really very good, handsome one. So I'm just saying that his modesty has become, <laughs> has not become between them. So I'm going to assume that his passing was probably a real big deal in the family. So does that mean mom is with him too? No. She's the one that's still here. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's just that the men are that are would they be the men connected on your dad's side that are with him? Is that what where yes. I am? Okay. So they're all coming through here together. And literally, I don't know if this was a professional reason or somebody else was a carpenter or did carpentry or did that something like that, they're telling me. Um, so my um stepfather uh was a it did a lot of, he, he made things. He made things. Is he dead too then? Yes. Okay. So he's the one that's identifying by your mom. Yes. Okay. That makes a whole lot of sense. And there's a Charles or a Carl somewhere in that group too, that are all coming here together. I don't know a Charles or a Carl. Okay. Well, you'll find out because they're tied in with the George or whatever it is. Somebody has got a hand up. Alicia has got a hand up because why Alicia? Wait a minute. Got on mute. Say that again. I know a Carl. The Carl's connected to you, and you're right next to Lori. And may I ask, is he is he like a peer level person also? And there's a He's actually Carl. my father. He's your father. Okay. So her stepfather brought your father in. You see how it works? <laughs> Everybody wants to be part of the party here. All right. Thank you. Now, you're not his only daughter, though, right? I am. Good. Wonderful. See. George was the, 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 the George is the only brother and your father's saying that you are the one and only sister daughter. So I just want to make sure <laughs> we're, we're all here. And everybody's bragging along the way. Um, now, I, I just kind of want to mention one other quick thing here. Your brother's telling me and you just sort of stay here, uh, Lori. I want your brother's telling me literally he knew he was going to cross. And you're looking like you don't know. He's very clear. He knew he was going to cross. I'm sure he knew. Yes. Linda, you're looking at me like I got four heads. What do you mean? <laughs> no, I, I'm sure my brother knew that he was going to cross. Yes, because I'm going to say because he was the only boy in the family and very the centered in the family, he wanted to have the image of him remain with his sisters. Do you understand? And your mom. Yes. That's what he's saying now. So mom is still here. Correct on that one. Yes. yes? And And are we all like overseeing what what's the story with over because the, the step dad's left crossed over right correct right. so are you the guys that are, are are overseeing mom is that where we are yes but it's it's difficult i got it but you got to understand when the husband comes through he's going to ask these questions you understand that yes yes so but the, the issue is is that you have your stepdad dad you have your brother passed. Do you understand this? And I hate to be the bringer of real news, but you're all women. <laughs> and this is not an uncommon phenomenon <laughs> that when the man men leave the scenes and has jumped onto the daughters or the sisters or whatever it is, 
Sometimes mommy's not always in the best mood. You understand, right? Yep. Are you with me, Linda? Yep. <laughs> Linda doesn't have much to say. She just keeps smiling about the situation. <laughs> And I and I'm sure your other sister will 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 go with it. So saying all of that, I just kind of want you to know that your your stepdad, but he seems to be actually a pretty nice guy. And I think he, you know, I think he he kept a lot together with your mom. You understand that. So his leaving kind of like left a lot with you guys. But the good news, I'm hoping this is the good news in quick, is that there are three of you, right? Are there three of you guys left still here? Yes. Yes? Okay. Linda's not sure. But there are three of you still here. So I don't know if you take turns or however you work out the situation here but all i can say is you're doing a good job with a difficult situation are you with me yeah okay <laughs> is linda always this way or is this just tonight i mean is no Laura that, that's that's laurie laurie that's laurie that's just the way she is okay i just want to double check <laughs> i wasn't sure if it wasn't something i said okay very good um but in any case uh you, you, you're you as long as you've got each other to help pull the weight which i hope you do it makes a big big difference unless it be all, all on one person do you understand that yes 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 yeah. uh and i'm going to ask one other quick thing here was the holidays did they used to be a big deal used to be yeah so yeah. you gotta understand that is also partly why mom is in the, the mood that she's in because we're no longer having fun on these times when we used to have fun right i finally got Lori to say something now so <laughs> I, I, what i'm saying is that is that this is a very very let me say one more time difficult year for many people it just yep. is it brings up and everything you could ever possibly have managed with a kitchen sink and those of us that are left here with the, the whatever it is just the kitchen sink are trying to you know say so to speak clean up the mess Got and mom it? doesn't want to celebrate it's it's very hard because she doesn't want to do anything as i rest my case was this a big holiday there you go so my hope is that she may not want to do this i got it are there other are other are younger ones in this family here no no okay so you guys do what you need to do to celebrate the way that you want to celebrate um you know this is her thing you can't she's as they said they could keep her instead do you understand the guys could keep her instead but you can't do it because she doesn't want to yeah. so you just do the best that you can and enjoy the moments that you have and there you go all right your birth father is also in spirit am i correct on that yes Correct. And he's been gone a long time, has he not? Yes. Yeah. So she lost him. She lost a stepdad. She lost your brother. You know, I don't know what to tell you, but you, you, I, you know what I'm saying. So um, try not let let her choices bring you guys down, and you celebrate the best way that you can. You can't you can't make those horses drink when you're bringing the water. You can't. Understood. Understood. Right. All right. Cool. Now. Um, I'm going to move over here real quick here to Alicia. So your, your dad actually, interesting enough, he's kind of cute dude, I have to tell you. <laughs> he's you. very, very cute, bowl of light, um, walked into the room, everybody lit up because he lit up, and that, that's just, that's just, that was just his, the way he did it, you know. Um, loved by many, loved by many, yes. Now, is a lot of his family crossed with him? Alicia? They have. Yeah, he said most of them are all over here with him. Um, he's bringing up an S named female, like a Sophie or a, a Sarah, something like that. Who would that be, please? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, the last name starts with an S. Is it like an S O or an S A? It's an open sound till I'm hearing it. Yeah, it's yeah. Salmon. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, got it. And so that would that would have been his given name then? Yes. Got it. Okay, thank you. And you knew his mom, by the way? I did not. You didn't. Okay. Was her passing a big deal to him? Um, she passed at a, at a very young age. I, I believe he was like nine. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, the reason why I want to emphasize with you, he says, I need to tell you that my mom was there to bring me over. Oh, great. And I, I believe he went through his life this being very hard for him. Yeah. And and I said that he loved you as a dad because he loved having a daughter. 
But oh. I want you to know that he loved having a daughter so much because he had lost his mom so young that it was wonderful for him. Do you know what I'm saying to you? To bestow right. that love upon you. That's nice. Yes. Really, really nice. Now, I'm going to ask one other quick thing here. I don't think he did this professionally, so I think it means something else here. Do you know why he would show me like a truck or a camper or something like that? Um, he worked on cars. Okay, got it. Okay, because mm -hmm. he's showing him his hands, and he said he had very skilled hands. Yes, he okay. did. Okay, and this must have been something that was a really big deal to him. It was. Yes. Okay. He would have gone along well with my dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he, but he could do a lot of things with his hands. And besides, you know, cars and stuff, there was nothing he couldn't kind of fix. He was a, yeah. a real, real putzer, as they, as they call him. He was. Yeah. He really yes. was. Yes. And did he always wear like these kind of like funky type hats or caps or whatever? I don't. I don't recall him wearing a lot of hats. Okay. Well, he's got one on today, but it's not like a cap. <laughs> And it's not like a regular hat. It'd be like something like the stupid that my father would wear. Like, but it was like, I can't explain. <laughs> but he says to me, you've got photos of them. Okay. So I want you to, it almost looks like a fishing gear hat. I mean, like guys that fish wear these kind of like these kind of hats. Okay. So, so okay. I kind of want you to, to go there. And I'm going to ask one other quick thing here. Um, we don't, do we no longer, do we have the house of where he lived in? <laughs> We do. Okay. So he's yeah. bringing that up. I'm taking this to be for a, a, a real big reason here. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you go ahead. Cause you know what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, my mother just passed away about, um, three weeks ago. Got it. And yeah. I am in the process of having to go through selling the home and say no more. So what I wanted to sort of say to you without being pushy, she says, mama's with me. Okay. And, and you asked me to be there to bring her over. And I was. Okay. Uh, and he said that you're doing a phenomenal job. And whatever flowers you gave her, they got them all. They said that there must have been tons of flowers because they got all the flowers. We were, you know, we love the flowers. That was a kind of a big deal. So somebody was really into all of that. All right. So you did a good job. Um, you. Your mom was ready. It was so sudden, though. It yeah. wasn't. It I wasn't know, expected she was, at all. Right. But again, what I'm saying to you is that mom was ready. And <laughs> as strange as this might be, I know there was a part of her that wanted to stay for the holidays but couldn't. Do you understand? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. So, um, you're, you're doing a great job, Alicia, your father's, you know, he said, you got it and you'll, you'll do what you need to do. But Thank you. I want to say one other quick thing here. I know the heart hat. I know the, I know the heart of the house has a lot of heart and a lot of memories. It does. Uh, this is not, you know, is going to be like an easy deal that ho that right. house has had to be in the family for a long time, according to what they're telling me. It has. So, it has. Yeah. Um, and nobody's going to live there. So it's time to go to the next program. <laughs> That's what we say. Yeah. Yeah. So you say that because remember, there was a lot of love in this house and we don't need the house right now. Nobody needs the house right now. And you want right. to make sure that it goes to somebody that's going to love it like the way you guys <laughs> love it. That's exactly what we've said. My brother and I both have said that. So it's time okay. for another family yeah. to share the memories. Exactly. And and I promise you that the right person will get it because your father will kick and scream to make sure <laughs> if somebody's not right for it, they won't get it. So you don't worry about that. Good. Good. Okay. All right. And yeah. she's with them. She he brought her over. Okay. Okay. Now I want to say one last thing here. I know that this was fast with her, but I'm gonna tell mm -hmm. you, I'm gonna be very straight and honest with you. Had she not crossed from the way that she crossed. It would not have been a good deal. No. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. You wouldn't want to see her that way. You really wouldn't. No. So she wouldn't. said, she said, I'm out of Dodge. That was my mom. Yeah. And gracefully. Know, was, yeah. Gracefully who she was and she needed to be with dad. Thank you. It was their oh. anniversary. 
Yeah, there you go. That was the present, the gift for each other. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank right, you dear. so much. You're so welcome that your father was pushy enough to push <laughs> George and the father out of the way. <laughs> Poor Lori and Linda. <laughs> Thank he got you. his way, but it was like that. I said, that's what they do. So um, happy joy there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're real welcome. Bye, Lori. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, Cheryl, like we went around the mulberry bush there. <laughs> wow. That was a wonderful message. Um, Uh, so guys, I have, I have someone here with me and they're telling me that you have their tattoo or you have a tattoo. Okay. Wow. That poor lady in the purple that was sitting there all that time. She never got red. She's just sitting there going, Hey, okay, anytime now, anytime now it's my turn. It's, <laughs> no, it never was her turn. So confusing, right? This is called in a box program. She's trying to do. Sharon, Alicia, Linda, and then Lori was added. So there are two men, one standing in between the people. So she wasn't quite sure who she was going to hit. A husband, a brother, a brother-in-law. We haven't gotten rid of him yet. Isn't that what she said? That was really like, he could be alive. We haven't gotten rid of him. And getting double sounds which could mean that there is a crossover it's a gobbledygook come on you guys past a march uh who is the female her sister is oh my sister's also here so again going back to the gift reading one person bought a reading and somebody else was bringing somebody else in who's george there's a george oh that's my grandfather my uncle okay when this i guarantee you when this reading's over She's going to say, I saw this medium and she knew that my uncle and grandfather's name were George. That's what she's going to say. But what actually happened is she said, who's George? And the sitter said, oh, that's my grandfather or my uncle. Kind of an interesting dude. Your brother is kind of an interesting dude. I want that on my tombstone. Susan was kind of an interesting woman or interesting gal. Kind of interesting. I wonder if that's what the obituary says. Here lies so-and-so. She was kind of interesting. Suzanne thinks she is so funny. I just can't get over it. She thinks she's so funny. She's like a comedian. She thinks she's supposed to be making making everybody laugh. You're talking to the dead. You're talking to grieving people. There's nothing funny. I know that they they like that. They you know try to do that. But again, remember, Suzanne has done this thousands of times, tens of thousands of times. You aren't the only daughter, are you? I am. That's a miss. And all these dead people who are who just happen to be what floating around and seeing that their loved ones are talking to Suzanne and they rush over and they're all like scooting people in and like, here, no, before you go ahead. No, you go. No, you go. Oh, here, you tell my mom this. I won't tell her that, but you tell her. And oh, my goodness. Um. <laughs> The stepdad, something about crafting stuff. The stepdad made items. Who's overseeing mom? You're overseeing mom. It's difficult. I I got the feeling there was something else going on there, right? Because she says, um, you're all women. She's like really flipping about it. all the guys are dead. And so now you women are everything. All the responsibilities are falling to you women. And she says, you're doing a good job with the difficult situation. Now, something felt completely off in that, as if um, maybe mom has Alzheimer's or is in a coma in a vegetated state or something, felt very wrong about what she was saying. Or maybe mom is estranged from us and, and we don't have any contact with mom. It didn't feel right with what Suzanne was trying to get at to what the the 
the sisters were saying about their mom and this thing where Suzanne says, and a lot of mediums will do this. You'll, you'll hear this. They say, do you understand me? Or does that make sense? Or um, that kind of thing. They, they throw that out there to get a response from the sitter and it's coming at them hard and fast. Right? So when they say, do you understand me? It's a way of getting them to say yes, but really, are they saying yes to what she said, like her her verbiage, her language? Can you understand what I'm saying out of my mouth right now? Can you hear me? Or does that make sense to you? Would it all that stuff I'm saying? Does that make sense? Does do you understand that? Those are two different statements, and for other people who are listening. Do you understand me is is a way of making other people say, oh, wow, they're getting a lot of hits because look at how they're agreeing to so many things. And I'll tell you a quick story. Mark Edward, um, my boyfriend, um, psychic, wrote a book on it, was in the business for years and years and years, um, mentalist, and yeah, wrote a book on the tricks of the psychics he said one of the tricks that they would do is if you're at like a halloween place or whatever where there's one of those tents and you'd have a psychic sitting at a table the psychic would sit with facing the doorway and people are lined up outside the door right and so they're waiting for their turn so the person who's next would come in and sit down and their back would be to the people outside and so the psychic medium at an opportune time would pull their chair up and lean in and say, can you hear me? And the person would say, yes, or, and nod their head. And to the people waiting in line, they'd say, Ooh, wow, they're getting a lot of hits. This is, oh, wow, that person's right. When they could see them nodding, but they couldn't really understand what they're agreeing to. When it's just, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. And that's the same kind of thing that that Suzanne's doing here. And remember, she's very skilled at this. So you could tell she was very struggling with those two sisters who were very stoic. And she was teasing them and making fun of them as she was going along, which didn't come off very well, especially considering we're talking about dead people and, and grief. Um, okay. Holidays used to be a big deal, right? And then she goes on and she's trying to, it's like she's trying to poke him with a stick, right? Well, I guess these women showed up and didn't have to show up and didn't have to volunteer that, that it was, that they would take the reading. So, and they're adults, they paid for this. Mom is not having fun. And so mom doesn't want to celebrate the holidays and everything's not right. You know, things aren't right the way they usually be. It's been a difficult year for everyone. No kidding. Was this a big holiday? And she's, and Suzanne's like, as I said, it used to be a big holiday. It was a big holiday for mom. And now she doesn't want to celebrate. Again, it just doesn't feel right. Like she's like the one sister said, she says, it's complicated. And is mom not wanting to celebrate because she's really depressed and she feels near death herself and her husband just died or is there something else going on is there estrangement in the family is there um, mental illness is there is she even responsive i don't know but something didn't feel right there okay continuing your birth father is in spirit a long time ago well yeah okay so that was a hit but uh, considering the woman is remarried and they didn't mention a dad celebrate the best you can that's the best you can do is celebrate the best you can it's really sad because she says is there any young ones nope there's nobody and the way she was talking about this brother let me go back to this yeah something she was talking about at the beginning about the brother and how he's just really glib about oh yeah well oh yeah he's the guy who's not such a big deal he was an okay dude um just that I'm the best brother. I'm the most handsome of the brothers because he's the only brother. Really wasn't that funny. 
All right. Uh, Alicia, A-L-I-S-H-A. Your father is a cute dude. I mean, does, does Suzanne really think she's funny? Dude. Sophie, Sarah, an S name, female. No, I don't know anybody that has an S name that's Sophie or Sarah or anything like that. Wow, that wow, it's amazing. Somebody doesn't have an S name. A female. And then she says, Oh, it's a last name. And then Suzanne says, Is it S A, S O, something like that? That that kind of sound. She's yeah, and she says the last name, and I've already forgotten it. I didn't write it down. But so that isn't a and she says that's your his name. And she's like, Yeah, his last name. So that's not a S name female like Sophie or Sarah. That is a man's last name that starts with an S. Totally different. And it didn't sound anything like Sophie or Sarah. Why is he struggling to say his name? Why not just say it? Are they like whispering? And you're just supposed to enter. Is that what Susan sees? Suzanne sing? Uh, did you know his mom? No, his mom died very young. I think he was about nine years old. So she's telling the story of how her father, her father's relationship. Was there a truck or a camper? And he worked on cars. Okay, so Suzanne has... I found at least twice in readings that she's done that she uses a car or a truck that's been passed down. So I was expecting that to happen and that didn't happen. So she just talking about a truck or a camper it meant a lot to him. He wore funky hats. No, I can't remember him ever wearing hats. Well, he's wearing it now. You see how the sitter, I mean, the medium can never be wrong. You just can't be wrong. You have photos of him. And as she says, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then she makes it sound like there was a photo of him with a floppy fishing hat. Okay. And then she hits gold. She says, do you still have the house he lived in? gold there comes the tears and she says yes we do and it turns out her mom died three weeks ago so she's right in the grief she is stressed out here she is going to see a medium like that's going to help anything oh my gosh she died three three weeks ago i'm stressed we're selling the home and yeah it's the home that her father lived in because that's the home that she just died and she's selling the house. So this is a completely different mom from those two sisters. So if you're confused, I'm not shocked. And there's another woman sitting there who still hasn't gotten her reading. And she's just sitting there going, I hope it's my turn soon. <laughs> no, she doesn't get a turn. She just gets to be sitting there. All right. So they're going to sell the home that was the family home which is natural. So now this woman is this woman who's sitting here, Alicia is trying to deal with the stress of all that because she's got to sell the home, deal with cleaning out the house. And it's only been three weeks. And here she is going to see a medium. Right. And then she says, mom, your mom was, your mom was ready to die. She goes, but it was really sudden. She goes, yeah, but she'd already decided she wanted to die. Okay. And then all this rigmarole about selling the house that go ahead and sell the house. He wants you to sell the house. They want a new family to live in it, create new memories. And she's like, yeah, we've already decided that my brother and I've already decided we're selling the house. That's why I said I'm selling the house. I'm dealing with the house selling of the house. That's I'm glad that you said that Suzanne, that he wants me to sell the house. Cause that's, what we're doing and there were so many memories there and oh my gosh it's time for other people to have new memories there yeah yeah we got that Suzanne she's selling the house and then here's this thing that didn't get brought up by Suzanne but it got brought up by Alicia she says her mom died on their anniversary 
that seems like something that maybe out of all the nonsense and and liberty giblets that uh, Suzanne said all that time, that that might have been something she would have said. And it was, and that is, now listen, if you wanted to go back and listen to that again, you can see how skilled Suzanne is with this wordplay. Because the woman says, Alicia says, it was their anniversary and Suzanne does not miss a beat. And she goes, right. That was her gift to each other. Right. Like she is like going to claim that right now. That is, that is it. I got it. So fascinating, right? Okay. So I have something else for you that we're just going to go over really quick because this is the end. It's still no Santa. It's not quite midnight. And we watched all of this, a, a few people and I privately. And uh, let's just look at some of these comments here. Hopefully you've watched all six of these videos. And I'm going back down here to where somebody was telling me like us. They had it all. Oh, that's the wrong one. I've done a lot of these things where we've watched other people's events oh gosh we've watched a lot of these heck yeah and oh there's that one no that's not the one i went like i said i've got a lot of videos to do oh shoot i can't find the video i can't find the comments but they were really talking about the difference between suzanne and um and and how Suzanne, you know, even though she's been doing Zoom these readings for for a few years now, she doesn't have it down. She's not, um, you know, her, it's not very professional setup. The way her angle, she's looking at a laptop, and it it doesn't reflect well. Oh well, I can't find it at the moment. So never mind. I had thought I had a treat to share with you guys, but I guess it's not right there. Okay. My point is, is that the contrast between Suzanne and Cheryl is, is, is strong. Um, Cheryl projects a more um, professional, um, professional look, a professional demeanor, a calmer, quieter demeanor. She's, she's not careful with her words. She's still throwing out tropes and hope to get a hit but Suzanne is is um she's much more skilled but she's she's I don't know if she's bored herself or like I said she might be trying to hide some of the the misses by throwing in more people um but it's it's um it's scattered it's just very scattered and she's forgetting things and missing things it doesn't feel and she's trying to be funny and Cheryl never seems to be trying to be funny, but their personalities are so different and um, not sympathetic. I mean, Suzanne, she uses a lot of throwaway lines that are supposed to be funny, but it really doesn't, I don't know, it comes off glib. So I don't know. I'm interested in your guys' comments. I'm interested in what you guys got in your notes that you took. Oh my goodness. There is six videos here this is tons it's like six hours <laughs> gee no um one hour two hours three hours it's about three hours of videos to go through i've done this several times already so i appreciate it you guys that you're here i really do um let's i'm just going to take a quick look Oh, somebody has posted on the first video they're watching it. And she says, uh, somebody named, oh, I can't even say this. B-E-L-T-E-R-G-L-J. Cool name. It's talking about the bowling ball from the other episode from the first video. And and um, I think it was Suzanne with the bowling ball. 
no, it was Cheryl with a bowling ball. She says, you have your dad's bowling ball. And the guy says, um, no, my brother has it. I think, I think my brother has it. And she says, that's fine. <laughs> this kind of a glib thing. Uh, Melody, Melody in Portland. Thank you, Melody. I'm so glad you're back. Oh my gosh. I tried to do this live feed today. And then my audio started not working right. It was just a mess. And Melody, thank you so much for being back here. She says uh, about the first video, she says, sounds similar to a childhood game called finish the story game or pass the story. One person would start a story, then others would start finish the story. It's an interesting way to manipulate people. That's well said. I remember this when we were in elementary school, we would take a piece of paper and you'd fold it several times. And so that somebody has a paper and it has like the beginning of a story. You'd say, okay, so the man went to the, went to go fishing. And when he got to the lake, he looked into the lake and he saw, and then the next person flips over the paper and then they write a couple sentences without knowing what's on the first part. And then you flip the paper again, that kind of thing where, you, and then when you open it up, you should have this long, um, uh, you know, story and maybe it'll make sense. Kind of like ad, ad libs a little bit. So yeah, Melanie, I think you're right on it. So I'm really curious what you guys have to say. So the people actually on Christmas Eve that are watching these already, and I, gosh, I appreciate it. It is work and it is so much work to do these things. I think it's important to do. I really do. I learned so much. I learned from you guys. I learned from these readings. I've seen Oh, I, I have no idea how many readings, hours of readings I've listened to. And I'm always finding something new, a new method or a new way of um, mani manipulating people or um, that kind of thing. It's just, um, I tell you, the psychology of it is fascinating. And there's no way that the reading can go over well if the person who's being read doesn't want it to go well. The person who's the motivated sitter is the one who is who's doing a lot of the work. They're making it happen by by making it fit. They're trying they're trying so hard to make it fit. Now when they leave this reading, I guarantee you, I swear I do because I've heard this so many times. Oh, he was so spot on. There's so many things that she said there's no way anybody could have known. Susan you, you don't know what you're talking about. You should get your own reading because these people are accurate and, and, and so on and so on and so on and so on. But if you actually look at the transcripts or listen to the audio or the video, which almost nobody ever has, almost never, if you were to look at it, you would see that what they heard and what they remember and what they're repeating to everybody is not what actually happened. And that's what I've been trying to say for, for months. So if you get nothing else out of this, but that, that's what's going on. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, happy holidays for everybody out there who celebrates. Um, the, my best wishes to you all. Um, spend as much time as you can with your friends and your family. Sometimes your family is your friends. And we make our own uh, families from the people around us. I know I have. I have very little family. And so my friends um, are those people that I treasure. And um, I, I treasure my family too, but there's so few of them. But my, I tell you, you know, spend as much time with people as you can this holiday season. Um, wash your hands after. No, I'm only kidding. Um, try to share some memories and reflect on those those people who have who have left us and the memories we have photographs are my life i have a gazillion photographs i i i um i feel a, a a deep connection to them i go instantly back to when it was taken or who was in it and i think that it's a good idea to respect those photographs get those scanned get them organized right on the back of the pictures get that stuff done because um, we need to we need to help remember each other and 
though sometimes those pictures don't mean anything to some people because it feels like everybody's gone. I, I don't think that's really true. I think there's always somebody who's going to appreciate them. Just keep them in good shape. Write down dates and who's on the uh, names of them if you can on the back. Lightly in pencil. <laughs> Get them scanned. Come on, you guys. Anyway, this is taking way too long. I'm obviously exhausted and it is 30 minutes till Santa gets here. Everybody in my house is asleep. All the cats are asleep. They're curled up in little balls with their little heads tucked in like this so, they, so nobody can see. It's just me. Me in the laundry. <laughs> Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate and happy holidays to everybody else out there. I'll be back. I've got a lot more to do. <laughs>